Hello everyone, this is Tricky and welcome back to another video. Today I'm bringing back a familiar face to the channel, but I'm forcing him against his will to do scary video topics. Not really, it was actually his idea. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Dobbs here, and yeah, Tricky has me held hostage in her closet. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. And I'm hungry. Shh. Help me. Quiet. Be sure to check out the second video on Dob's channel. We'll be covering the top 10 most evil Pokemon on his channel. So be sure to go down to the description and click on that video, open it in a new tab, and then I want to see all of you in the comment section. If you haven't seen our first collab, be sure to check out that as well. Anyways, let's go ahead and get back to the topic at hand. There's a lot of Pokemon who have died in the games and in the anime, so obviously there's a few spoilers in this video. There's a few Pokemon that have come back from the dead. Control the dead or even have qualities that resemble zombie-like creatures from other video games and media. Today Dobbs and I are going to be covering them, so let's get spooky and begin. Starting off this list, we have Aurorikario Sensu Style. Now even though this top 10 is mainly about zombie Pokemon, we wanted to start this video off with a twist. Aurorikario Sensu Style isn't a zombie itself, but rather has the ability to summon the dead from the ground. According to his Pokedex entries, Aurorikario summons the dead with his dreamy dancing and has the ability to send the minds and hearts of his enemies to another world. So basically this description is saying that this ghost type Pokemon is a necromancer, which is something that I've always wanted to see in Pokemon. Unfortunately though, this style of Aurorikario doesn't have a clear origin. We know these birds are based on the Hawaiian honey creepers, but what explains the zombie so many powers? And even after countless hours of going through Japanese mythology, we couldn't really find any creatures that summon the dead with Sensu fan dancing. Let us know in the comments on what you think Aurori Kario Sensu style is based on. We're really curious to see what you think. Moving on to number 9, we have Kabutops and Aerodactyl from Pokemon Heroes. As I said before, this video contains spoilers, so don't get mad at me. There's your warning. Pokemon Heroes is a film that takes place in the Italian-styled city of Altamar. Surrounded by water, and this beautiful place is protected by the dragon twins, Latias and Latios. I would like one for my home. For some odd reason, the citizens of Altamar created a godlike machine to protect the city if disaster ever occurred, but they never really had to use it, so it was just kind of sitting there. This machine can be powered only by the Soul Dew, which is a pretty ball thing that contains a soul of a Latios. This all-powerful machine is just chilling in a museum with barely any security whatsoever. No security lasers, not even an army of Pokemon to protect it. I sense a plot. Anyways, the inevitable happens. Two evil chicks pop up, they steal the Soul do, they stole Latios, and then they go to the museum wanting to take control over this machine. This thing could literally bend reality, so I don't know why they don't have any security for this thing. It could make random gate things spawn out of nowhere, you could control water to your full will, and then apparently it could bring dead things back to life. Why do they have a Jesus machine just chilling in the public? What? With the power of the machine, they bring back Aerodactyl and Kabutops to wreak havoc on the city and to retrieve Latias. Both of them have those creepy lifeless eyes, they're freaking creepy looking. In the Pokemon games, obviously, you could bring fossil Pokemon back to life, so in a way, technically, all fossil Pokemon are zombies. But these two specific ones were just temporarily reanimated. They have zombie eyes, they look freaking creepy, they just fit the bill the most out of all of them. Coming in at number 8, we have Psyduck from the Pokemon manga. Now, one of the reasons why I love the Pokemon Adventures manga so much is because it's probably one of the most violent adaptations of the Pokemon world. I mean, this is the same manga that shattered a frozen Magmar into pieces and even sliced an Arbok in half. So seeing zombies in one of the chapters is just another day in the world of the Pokemon Adventures. Now, in chapter 13 of the first volume, Red arrives to the notorious Lavender Town for the first time. And after stepping into the haunted tower, Red finds out that a wretched Ghastly has taken control control of dead Pokemon and turn them into zombies. And it wasn't just a few Pokemon that were reanimated, but rather a horde of these undead creatures. Which is something that's pretty awesome to see, but it also sparks a theory. What if this Ghastly's powers was an inspiration for Aurorikario's abilities? I mean, think about it. It was stated on the Pokemon website that the Sensu style Aurorikario dance reminded Kanto natives of their homeland. Not to mention that the Purple Nectar is basically a video game adaptation of the real life Lavender Flower, and that Aurorikario's Sensu style is a ghost type Pokemon. It's kind of a stretch, but still pretty fun to think about. All of the connections. At number seven, we have Entei, Suicune, and Raikou. They don't look like zombies, but technically all three of them have died and come back to life. Entei, Suicune, and Raikou were originally common Pokemon that lived within the Brass Tower within Ecrotic City in the Johto region. We don't actually know what Pokemon they originally used to be, but there's theories out there, so you could be kind of creative with it. There's a few saying that they were originally Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon, 
Glorion, but this isn't confirmed. Some even say that they were weak or sick Pokemon, and that was their reasoning for not being able to escape the tower while it was burning. It also could be that these Pokemon sacrificed their own lives to make sure that everyone else could escape, and that would kind of make the most sense to me if they were rewarded by Ho-Oh, you know what I mean? Backing up a little bit, the Brass Tower and the Bell Tower were places meant to foster friendship between Pokemon and humans. Then the Brass Tower was struck by lightning, it caused a fire, and it was really sad. There were three Pokemon trapped inside and sadly burnt alive. The fire was put out by a random rainstorm, but it was already too late. Ho-Oh then comes to the rescue and brings the three Pokemon who perished back to life. They become the legendary beasts that we know and love today. Most of the people who witnessed this became extremely afraid because, you know, those Pokemon literally cheated death, and then they retaliated with violence. Sounds extremely zombie-like. It's really freaking cool that Ho-Oh is so powerful that it could bring Pokemon back to life, and this backstory is definitely one of my favorites. Standing in at number 6, we have Wobbuffet. Now this enduring Pokemon has always been one of the most mystifying creatures in the Pokemon world, and there's a good reason for that. You see, according to his Pokedex entries, Wobbuffet goes through every measure to protect and hide his mysterious tail, and if somehow the opposing Pokemon grabs a hold of it, Wobbuffet will use Destiny Bond to take the opponent to another dimension. Now we've all heard of the infamous theory that suggests that Wobbuffet's inflatable body is just a decoy, and that the real Wobbuffet is actually the small black tail. And after going through his Pokedex entries and studying its behavior, I think this theory is pretty spot on. But there's more to Wobbuffet than just his body being a decoy. I'm talking about what if the blue inflatable body is actually the corpse of an unknown Pokemon? I mean, this isn't like Bened, which is a possessed plush doll. Wobbuffet's decoy body has a tongue and empty eye sockets. It's almost like the small shy tail took control of a dead Pokemon and now is using his body like an inflatable balloon. It's an interesting theory, but it's safe to say that there's more to Wobbuffet than meets the eye. Let us know in the comments on what you think. At number 5, we have Sedinja, the lovely ghost bug Pokemon. Dobbs and I had to draw a line somewhere so we didn't get ghost Pokemon and zombie Pokemon confused. Ghosts are spirits that don't have physical solid forms, while zombies are dead bodies that become reanimated. So technically, Sedinja is a zombie and not a spirit since it is a shell of its original form. You could get this Pokemon by evolving your Nakata, but you have to leave an extra space in your party before you evolve it into a Ninjask at level 20. Once it evolves, then you could have a Ninjask and its old body in your party! Sedinja possesses no internal organs and doesn't breathe. Its shell is pretty hard, so it's basically incapable of actual movement besides floating around very creepily. If you get curious and decide to look into the hole in between its wings, it will steal your soul. So don't do that. This is a bug shell that came back to life. Basically a bug zombie thing with a cute halo thing. And it will steal your soul. Rip the dream. Creeping in at number 4, we have Buried Alive. Now back in the beta stages of Pokemon Red and Green, a rumored final boss was said to appear on top of the Pokemon Tower. How the myth was told was that if the player clicked on the gravestone on the final floor, a zombie-like NPC would appear and challenge you to a battle. During this disturbing battle, the player would face against a level 94 Muck that had the ability to turn invisible, a level 90 Gengar with the move Nightshade, and finally, two level 101 White Hands that were basically invincible. Now after several years and many advances in online forums, Pokemon fans came to learn that this rumor was only a conspiracy theory and was never proven to be true. But after the release of the animated miniseries, called Pokemon Origins, Pokemon fans around the world started to wonder if this zombified trainer was actually real. Because during the second episode of Pokemon Origins during the Lavender Town arc, Red is seen with a ghost-like hand on his left shoulder while talking to other trainers in the Pokemon Center. So after seeing this, one has to wonder if Nintendo basically confirmed the existence of this notorious zombie final boss. The same final boss that eats you alive after defeating you with this unbeatable white-handed Pokemon. Let's just say no to self, don't visit Lavender Town again. I guess that white hand that's resting on your shoulder isn't real then either, huh? Huh? What? Oh, come on. Stop kidding me like that, Kay. Oh. At number 3, we have AZ's Fluet, aka the Eternal Flower Fluet, aka the Very Fancy Fluet. As covered in the plot for Pokemon X and Y, a huge war erupted in the Kalos region 3,000 years prior to the events of the actual games. I actually wish that there was gameplay that kind of revolved around this war because it's actually super interesting. AZ was the king of Kalos, but unfortunately, his lovely beloved Fluet was killed during the war. After he discovered her body, he went into an extreme state of depression 
fashion. In desperation, he created a device to bring back his Floette from death. Somehow it worked, but the guy was already too far gone and he used the same machine as a weapon of destruction. Basically, the dude went completely psycho, killed everyone, and then ended the war. His Floette witnessed everything. Floette was extremely disgusted by his actions and felt ashamed that so many lives were taken just because of her, so she peaced out and left. 3,000 years later, they finally reunited and made up. I think the reason why they're still living is because of that machine and it gives some kind of eternal life or something, but they didn't really go into full detail about it. So yeah, Floette is technically a zombie. Of course, it's still very, very cute and it's not decomposing or anything like that, but it did in fact die and come back to life. I guess it's nice that she finally forgave her trainer for killing everyone. Such a sweet story. Traveling in at number two, we have Ash from the Pokemon anime. Now, Ash Ketchum has always been one of the most lovable characters in the Pokemon anime, but it seems that TV Tokyo has a different opinion because they've killed Ash off more times than Goku has from Dragon Ball Z, and that's saying something. I mean, there's even a Wikipedia page that's dedicated to listing every time Ash has been killed in the Pokemon anime and the Pokemon movies. And with this large portfolio of death, Ash still manages to find a way to come back to life. So either Ash is a Shinigami with a death note, or he's a straight up zombie. I always knew there was something up with Ash ever since he was crushed by that chandelier. He's been a zombie all of this time. <laughs> or he just sucks. Win it! Please don't! Fatality. Now it's time to reveal number one. Taking our lovely number one spot, we have Parasect. This is probably the most tragic Pokemon in the entire Pokedex due to its unfortunate situation. First off, we have Paris, a very cute little bug Pokemon with mushrooms on its back. Looks innocent enough, right? And it's able to think for itself. And there's actually life in its eyes. The two mushrooms on its back are actually a type of parasitic fungi that is slowly taken over its body. Think of it as a zombie infection slowly getting worse until you are completely taken over. Once it evolves, the fungi has completely stolen all the nutrients from its body and it takes over the brain completely. The mind of Paris is no longer there. The fungus is what controls the body now. It's actually super freaking sad. That's why Parasect's eyes are completely lifeless and empty. The mushroom on its back is the only living thing. See that face? That's a dead face. Nothing in that is alive. I don't see how Pokemon trainers still have this thing. I've mentioned Parasect before in past videos and every single time that I talk about it, I always have to bring up The Last of Us. The zombie outbreak was caused by spore or fungus that slowly took over humans in that universe. The thing that makes me the most sad is that Paris probably knows its fate. Dude, what a life? You just sit there and you know that you're gonna be a zombie one day? That sucks! What if you have a Paris and then it becomes a Parasect? Does it actually remember you? I mean, zombies usually do not remember you. They just look at you and want to eat your brains. Paris trainers must have it really rough. Well, that is all the zombies that we have for you guys today. I hope you don't take this video too seriously because it was done for fun. Be sure to check out our second video over on Job's channel. It's a top 10 most evil Pokemon. I want to see my tricksters over there. Take over that comment section. Go forth. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos and do the same for my dear Dobbs buddy. Here are my social links. You can follow me if you'd like. And also they're in the description so you could click on them. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.